Welcome and hello everyone. My name is Jenna and I'm the school assistant and I'm part of the education team at the Walt Disney Family Museum. We're so excited to have you join us for our segment of the Big Green Draw 2020, A Climate of Change. In our portion of the Big Draw, we will be going over how Walt Disney envisioned a better future for our planet through his plans of Epcot and the ways in which we can continue Walt's vision and our own vision of an ideal future for our planet and for humanity. We're so excited to have you join us today to learn some exciting facts, but also do some fun activities as well. We want you to take a moment to imagine our planet Earth. Think about all of the things you like about it. Do you love going into the ocean? Do you like animals? Are you interested in hiking or going outside? Think about all these aspects of Earth that make you happy. And just like you may protect some of the things you love at home, like maybe your siblings or your favorite toy or maybe even your pet, that's our job to also protect the things on Earth that make us happy. Let's start with learning about the word sustainable. You may have heard this word before, or maybe you haven't. But when people say we need to make our lives on Earth sustainable, what they really mean is, we need to protect our earth and make sure humans can live on it for as long as possible. Making sure something is sustainable is making sure something can last a long time while also being safe for our planet. But why is this something we need to think about? Well, just like how money doesn't actually grow on trees, we have limited resources here on earth to produce energy for the things that we love, like the internet, TV, cars, and other forms of technology. But there are things that we can do so that we don't use up all of our resources. The resources we tend to use to produce our energy are oil, natural gas, and coal. These are known as fossil fuels. There are two reasons why fossil fuels aren't sustainable. One, we don't have an unlimited source of these types of energy. Oil will eventually run out as well as coal. Two, when we burn coal, gas, and oil, we release harmful chemicals into our air, which damage our planet and the air surrounding us. What are two things that never run out or go away? The sun and the wind. Here on Earth, we have unlimited sunlight and wind. These are two sustainable sources of energy because they can last and using their energy doesn't do harm to our planet. The sun. We already know that the sun can do a great job of warming us up and helping plants grow. This is a form of energy. So instead of using oil or coal to produce energy, scientists have figured out a way to use the sun's energy to help make our technology work. You might have seen these before. They are most commonly found in rooftops of a building. These solar panels help take the sun's energy and convert it into electricity. The wind. A wind turbine works the opposite of a fan. Instead of using electricity to turn the blades to make wind, it uses the wind to turn the blades to make electricity. But since not all areas of the planet are really windy, scientists put these wind turbines in places that have a lot of wind. Because without the wind, no energy will be produced with these machines. So these are just two ways in which we can convert our everlasting resources into energy without being harmful to our planet. But what else can we do as individuals to make changes in our everyday lives? Well, we're sure you've heard of recycling, but just in case you haven't, we'll go over it. Have you ever seen this symbol? This is the universal recycling symbol. Recycling is when we take approved man-made materials and convert them into something else. Just like how there are certain resources for energy that can be reused, like the sun and wind, there are some materials that can also be reused, like glass, aluminum, plastic, paper, cardboard, and more. When we throw these items into the recycling bin, they are brought to a recycling center that will help turn these items into different things. But sometimes you can also use recyclable materials to reuse 
and make something of your own, like a craft project. And the more we reuse something, the less items we are consuming and the less energy is being used to make newer items. And also, this means less waste that will take up space on the planet that can't be recycled or composted. What is composting? Composting is using natural waste like food scraps, yard clippings, and paper towels to help plants grow. And plants bring more oxygen and healthy air into our environment. So what can we do? Remember to recycle materials and compost food waste to reduce energy. There are also other little ways we can save energy around the house. As we already talked about, we are still using lots of fossil fuels like oil, coal, and gas to power our electronics. One way we can help slow down our resources from running out is to remember to turn off lights, water, and technology when we aren't using them. Another way is to use electric cars versus gas cars, since gas emissions pollute the air, and pollution is no good. It smells bad, causes harm to our wildlife, and makes our sky look dark and murky. Now that you know about the little changes that can be made to our planet, we want you to think about your perfect future. Walt Disney used to think about what his ideal future would look like. He once had the idea of creating a real futuristic community with cleaner energy through his vision of Epcot. In Epcot, Walt Disney wanted to build an ideal, efficient community. Part of this meant public transportation for all of its citizens. For example, his idea was to build sky rails, which look very similar to Disneyland's monorail and the People Mover. The good thing about these types of transportation is that they are also more environmentally friendly since they wouldn't be using fossil fuels. Now it's your turn to draw your own. What do you want the future to look like? How will it be good for the environment? Show us your creative flair. Here's an example that my team member Natalie drew. We've talked about how Walt Disney wanted to make Epcot a community of the future. In order to do that, he had to plan out what this community would look like, while also making it as efficient as he could. Today, you'll be drawing your very own city of tomorrow. And as you do that, think about what you could put into your community to make the world a better and more sustainable place. The only materials you need for this activity are paper, a pencil, and an eraser. Feel free to use other materials like markers or crayons in your drawing as well. Now let's begin. To start off, Natalie is writing down some of the things that she definitely wants to be included within her city, such as national parks, solar farms, windmills, an amusement park, and so on. While starting your drawing, we suggest creating an outline or a general shape of your city. This will give you an idea on how much room you'll have to work with. After that is drawn in, we can start figuring out how you're going to fit everything into your piece. Epcot had a central focal point in its community that everything else seemed to revolve around, so Natalie drew a center in her city. This is going to represent the downtown area, food, shopping, apartments, and businesses. Natalie's style of drawing in this piece will make some of the elements larger in certain areas to represent the different sections in her city as she continues to draw. The city plan has a top-down, bird's-eye view where all the elements are straight on facing the viewer. She's also adding rooftop gardens to the buildings with flowers, herbs, fruits, and vegetables for sustainable living. She's branching out those lines from the center all the way to the edge to create some roadways with hubs that lead in and out of the city. This also helps to section out areas within the space so that she can add in all her other ideas. 
In this section, Natalie is focusing on agriculture, which means this area will be filled with hills, fields, and mountains. Agriculture is very important. It serves as the backbone of our economy and is the practice of farming and growing crops, which provides most of the world's food, along with other resources like cotton, wheat, and wool. Along with that, she added some windmills on the hills. They are used as a source of wind energy to pump water and grind grains. The mountains and hills have a three-dimensional feel to them, which you can also do through the use of color, shading, and highlights. The fields are drawn in a bird's eye view. That is why you will see the fields sectioned off and they will have a more two-dimensional flat feel. Moving downward, this section is for the national parks. What is a national park? A national park is an area that is protected by the government for conservation, protecting the natural environment and the wildlife that live there. Natalie included things you would find in the forest, like trees, boulders, rivers, and wildlife, like the grizzly bear and the coyote. The cliff edge is closer to the border of the section, while the boulder is farther away, creating the overlap, which makes it pop out and seem three-dimensional. Fun fact, the Walt Disney Family Museum is actually located in a national park in the Presidio of San Francisco. In this next section, Natalie used this space for two purposes. One side is for renewable energy with solar farms and wind turbines, which power her city. Solar farms harness energy from the sun, while wind turbines convert wind energy into electricity. She purposely placed these areas next to each other on the edge of the city because they are usually in wide, open areas. The other side is for housing for the people of Natalie City to live in, including neighborhoods, parks, and schools. She drew in blocks for these areas so that it would be easy to figure out where the different areas were going to be placed. Natalie's favorite part about this city is the amusement park and something she had to include. The park is the furthest from the viewer, with its perspective changing slightly so you can see the tops of the structures. This amusement park is also located on an island that you can only get to by ferry. Again, here's the finished product. Color was used as a coating tool to differentiate between the houses and the solar farms. She used flat, two-dimensional shapes to represent the neighborhoods in the area. As mentioned earlier, color, shading, and highlights can have a great effect on the look of your city and the perspective of your drawing. We encourage you to be as creative as you'd like. We hope this inspires you not only to create your own city, but to also think about how you can bring about change for the future of our planet. We hope you were able to pick up a couple of things with us today and that you can continue to help protect our planet and make it more sustainable. Have a nice day and enjoy the rest of what we have to offer for the Big Green Draw 2020, A Climate of Change. You can continue supporting the museum and these programs by becoming a member at waltdisney.org slash membership or donating at waltdisney.org slash donate.